Hi, this is Tyler from After Touch Audio. Let's talk guns. Over the last few years, guns in video games and films have gotten exponentially more powerful and detailed. And today we're going to look at how to create more powerful sounding gunshots. Before we dive into the DAW, I really want to start this video off by listening to a few of the guns from the Call of Duty series to see how they compare with one another. Let me know which one's your favorite in the comments below. <laughs> the good old quick scoping days. My personal favorite was from World War II, but I also like the explosive element of Modern Warfare. Each of these games has their own distinct sound, and by listening to each of the guns side by side, you really get a sense of how the gun sounds have evolved over the years. My goal here today is not to replicate one of these guns, but to design a similar sounding sniper rifle. So let's load up, head out to the shooting range, and record some guns. Roll the montage. Well, that was fun. Now let's just listen to what we got here and... Hmm. Well, okay. Where's all the power? Believe it or not, this is what raw, realistic guns actually sound like. Compared to gun sounds in video games, they just don't really stack up. If we were to just put this sample into our game or film, our guns would feel very underwhelming and underpowered. So how do we go from this puny gunshot to a AAA $100 million sound? Let's quickly have a look and break down the elements that make up a standard gunshot. I like to break down these samples the same way I break down my explosions, just with a few extra elements. The elements I need to make sure that I include in my sound designs are the transient, the body, the thump, the tail, foley and mechanical sounds, and the shell or casing. Any good chef would tell you that starting out with high quality ingredients yield a much better dish. And the same principle applies to sound design. Choosing the right samples here is critical. Try not to clog your weapon design with a lot of unnecessary samples and remember to play to the sample's strengths. If your sample doesn't have a lot of high end, don't try to process it to have more high end. Either find a complementing sample or find a different sample that does what you need it to do. As a sound designer, I aim to get the sound I'm trying to design as good as possible before applying a lot of over the top processing. No! So let's go a little out of order here as I really want to start with the body and the tail of the sound first, as this is where the meat and the thwack of the sound is located. What I like to do is record my gun samples with multiple microphone positions or choose a gun sample library that already has multiple microphone positions. Close, mid, bar, bottle mics, whatever I can get my hands on really. I'll dive more into why multiple microphone options are critical in my cutting car sound effects video, but for now, let me just play you an example. If we take this recording from a Remington close up and layer it with microphones that we placed a little farther away from the gun and microphones that we placed far away from the gun, we get this. Don't forget to space out your samples and add some character to the sound. Now, if we simply run this through some parallel compression and give it some aggressive saturation, we get this. This gives us our very solid starting point and takes off two layers we needed for the sound. Now let's make like an onion and add some more layers. Samples have layers. Up next, we need to deal with this initial impact and make it a little more boomy. For this sound, I use a slap sound effect, a kick sound effect, and a single bass drum run through a subharmonic generator. Together we get this. For the thump layer, I just use a single sample of a small explosion. This is already sounding pretty good, but we're missing the mechanical portions of the gun. So let's slap some gun foley in there and add a bullet ejecting. <laughs> All right, this is sounding really good. We can now finish the sound off by applying a couple of master of effects. Some low end processing to really bring out that low transient that hits you in the chest. Some multiband compression to really help control the dynamics of the sound. Some saturation and a limiter. All together, our finished sound sounds like this. Just to recap, here are some simple tips to keep in mind when you are designing your own gun sounds. Just like a good chef, quality samples are essential. And if you can use multiple microphone perspectives, it really helps fill out the natural sound of the weapon. If I'm making lemon pasta, I really want the taste of that lemon to be present. It's the same thing with the guns. 
I really want to hear the original sound of the weapon that I'm recording. Everything else I add is complimentary. Choose samples that complement your source recording. If you're trying to make a more powerful bass impact out of mid-range samples, it might be better to just use a sample that has more bass in it to begin with. Remember that you can always record your own samples if you can't find anything. Kick drums, large door slams, and locks are fantastic source recordings for guns. Remember the sound elements of a gun. Having a simple roadmap on what you're trying to design will really help organize your thoughts and will help keep your sessions organized as well. I often write up the elements that I need to capture or focus on when designing new sounds to make sure I don't miss anything. Use sound sources that are relatively the same size as the thing you are trying to design. This is an odd one, but if you start implementing this technique into your workflow, you'll understand why. Small objects tend to be higher in pitch, while larger objects tend to be lower in pitch. Using shotgun sounds for pistols just doesn't quite fit. And finally, don't be afraid to have your guns just hit harder. If you've ever shot a gun before, you know they kick back. And having your initial impact hit super hard really helps recreate the feeling you experience when you're firing a weapon. If you ever have time to go to the gun range and shoot some weapons, I highly encourage it, as it will really help give you a reference point in recreating that satisfying experience that you get when you fire a weapon. Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I would love to listen to some of the gun sounds you designed, and leave the finished video in the comment section and I'll go check it out. Thank you guys for watching, now go make some noise.